Hi, I'm Angie Monco, and I guide women leaders to overcome overwhelm so they can remember who they are and access that inner light, that freedom and peace within. And so today I want to talk about, do you feel overwhelmed? And, you know, have you come up against a wall of getting something that is really important to you? You're not alone. A lot of us are overwhelmed nowadays with the fast pace of our world. Um, this discussion is going to revolve around the causes of overwhelm and how to overcome it. And why should you care about this? You should care because overwhelm will rob us of relationships, of our career, and even our health itself. It's critical that we learn how to overcome it. So is overwhelm normal? Well, it's become so familiar to us that we have normalized it. But that doesn't mean we should normalize it or that it's good for us. Um, a lot of times we're just living on autopilot thinking that, well, that's the way it is. And uh, are you overwhelmed? I have a list. See the rest of the blog for the full list. But I have three questions I'll throw at you right now. Do you work too hard? and not recognize your own needs and desires? Did something happen that feels like too much too fast? Are you working so hard um, to please others and putting your health and peace of mind at risk? And do you recognize roller coaster patterns in your relationships and in your finances? So what is the cause of overwhelm? Well, it comes from childhood. So why do we push ourselves so hard that we become overwhelmed. Have you ever considered that the idea goes back to when we were children, the reason it originated then? For example, let's say you grew up with a dad who didn't give you much attention, and so now we, we become hyperachievers to gain his love and approval. Um, so something, did you know that overwhelm equals trauma to the body? To the body, it's the same thing. Um, people confuse stress with trauma, but there's a difference. We experience stress when we push ourselves super hard, you know, pedal to the metal. Whereas with trauma, it's the opposite. We actually go into a shutdown mode where we just collapse and we have no energy at all. Um, so there, we often get into the seesaw pattern of lots of energy and stress and then crash and burn and we're burnt out. So it's not healthy for our body to go in that up and down cycle. So remember that trauma equals overwhelm to the body. And whenever you have trauma, you can almost be assured there is grief. So I'm, I'm bringing in grief now, and John W. James in his book, The Grief Recovery Handbook, defines grief as this. Conflicting emotions caused by the end of a change in a familiar pattern of behavior. Conflicting emotions caused by the end of or a change in a familiar pattern of behavior. You know, as kids, when we experience change or trauma, um, we don't understand the events when they happen, so we make up all these meanings about it. For example, when my Aunt Elaine died when she was 16 years old, I was six, um, we were both born 923, and I assumed that I would die when I turned 16 years old. So as kids, we experience some sort of grief or trauma. It doesn't have to be a big trauma, but it could be a little trauma. And we experience it and then we forget about it. You know, we move forward in our lives, uh, but our subconscious, our body does not forget about it. So we carry around these grief experiences like luggage. And then everyone around us is carrying around their luggage that they ignore too. And so um, even in our downtime, you know, we're so often on our devices that we don't get rest and recovery time. So my question to you is, what if you're grieving something and you don't even know it? Is it possible that you've shut down to feeling your feelings that you're grieving and you don't know it? Um, do you allow yourself to be a human with needs if you're a leader? Would you know it if you've been running away from yourself and your feelings and, and your body? Would you even know that? So, I don't know. If you are running away from your feelings, that is a symptom of not knowing how to grieve. Uh, we don't know how to heal from this 
string of painful traumatic life experiences, also known as a broken heart. And you may say to me, well, Angie, I don't have a broken heart. And maybe you don't, but I would just ask you to do this little exercise where you really slow down, you connect to your breath, you put your hands over your heart and ask the questions. There's a lot of them over there, but I'll only mention a few. Have, have you ever been asked to say goodbye to a certain way of life? A child, a spouse, a parent or other important relationship, a career, a home, a change in health, etc. Do you distract yourself with work and busyness to avoid feeling sadness and grief? <laughs> Would you rather take a stick to the eye than sit in silence with your feelings? And so forth and so on. Just check out the full list. If you answered yes to any of them, you have grief in your body. So a lot of us are walking around unconscious that we are grieving. And if we're unconscious of it, then we're not going to go through any process of healing. And if we choose not to grieve, once we do become aware of it, we're really holding ourselves back from living. Um, this pastor, Gary Rowe, said it like this. Imagine we all have a standard suitcase. And one loss or difficult experience carries a lot of weight with it, like a heavy brick. If we get enough bad experiences, we carry around a lot of bricks and we'll need to get a new suitcase. He says, we do amazing things to avoid feeling good, but yet we're not feeling good. We have to express our grief or it will leak out in other unhealthy ways with relationships, career, and health. So are you ready to take a look at the overwhelm that you have in your life? Um, it's your body signal, do something different. Do you feel ready to get your needs met in a healthy way? So I invite you to have a, a new grounding practice, a daily one, where you even, if you even take five minutes, it will, it will really have an effect. You can learn a new way of reacting to life by slowing down and tuning into your body through deep breaths. So you set that timer for five minutes, you take some deep diaphragmatic breaths through the belly and not through the chest, and then um, you inhale through your nose to the count of four, you hold it for four seconds, you exhale to the count of four, and you hold it for four seconds. And you just repeat that during this five minute cycle. It's, it's super simple. Um, not so easy to always be motivated to sit down and do that, but what it'll do is it'll turn off your stress response that keeps you in a state of survival. <clears throat> and it'll calm your trauma response, which keeps you stuck and frozen. So what's your next step to overcoming overwhelm? Well, I'm creating right now a masterclass and it's called Three Steps to Grief Relief, a masterclass for women leaders who feel overworked and overwhelmed. Um, what you will learn is the essential steps to healing from trauma, a powerful technique to help you break through overwhelm and find grief relief, and how to manage your emotions and find your way forward to happier, more carefree days. And uh, you can go to harmonyharbor.com and go to my contact page, reach out to me. It will soon be up on my website. Um, it may be by the time you're watching this. So um, if you check out events, but in the meantime, reach out, connect with me, let me support you. You know, a sign of increased self-esteem is you reaching out and asking for help. You know, we want a healthy independence, interdependence, not overly independent. Thank you so much.